Hey, 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 what's your self-talk? So I'm here with you every Tuesday talking to you about that really important question I always ask, what's your self-talk? And remember, my goal is to continue to come to you and talk about the things that you need to do to embrace this growth mindset. So we have a choice. We can go throughout the day and we can ask this question, what's your self-talk? And then we can either answer the question with the things that we need to do to get better or we can stay in a fixed mindset and not choose to do better and have better results in our life. Um, so like I told you, I'm going to always bring ideas and experts. And so today is one of those days. So on episode 15, what we're going to talk about is nobody is perfect. And Understanding why nobody is perfect is so important because we live in this world where we think we have it all figured out. And so I have a very, very unique guest with me, uh, Mr. Charleston Gurley. Mr. Charleston Gurley is actually the author of The Black Accountant. Uh, this book just came out a few months ago. And what he has done... Um, and been through it's beautiful I mean you, you have somebody who used to play football at Arkansas State University so that's why I went to school that so you know I'm always supporting that you have somebody who is a part of a, a great fraternity you have somebody who has been through a lot of adversity and one thing that I love and understand that anytime you go through adversity anytime that you go through something you either come out a better person or a bitter person and that's the choice. And this brother came out a better person. Uh, grown up from adversity from a little boy with his twin brother on up to where he's at right now. But the thing I love about his story is that he's not allowing all those things to hold him back. And that is what I found out. So many of us allow our past to hold us back from moving forward. So I want you to welcome me to... Mr. Charleston Girl, and we're going to talk about his book. How you doing today, brother? Doing good, doing good. Good, 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 man. So, tell me, let's just jump straight in. What what made you write this book? So, it was a couple different things that made me write the book. Um, I was going through, I would say, a depression state. Mm -hmm. And so, during that time, I was dealing with alcohol abuse where I was kind of drinking consistently. Mm -hmm. And I just wasn't myself, but at the same time, I didn't know how to come out of a depression. Mm -hmm. So I have a cousin, Larry Dawson, who is a psychologist, and he told me, you know, one of the things you need to do is write out your thoughts, mm -hmm. write out your feelings. Mm -hmm. So I decided that I would write a letter to myself. And so as I started writing a letter, all the different thoughts started just coming out just from childhood um, to college, all these different things. Yeah. And so next thing I know, like the letter was really long. And so I was like, man, at this point, I can probably turn it into a book. Not really just deciding on a book to, for other people because it was a lot of personal things. Mm -hmm. But the more I thought about it, the more I knew that it was a story that needed to be told. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, and we'll j jump into the personal in a minute. But how did that feel for you to eventually realize like you're writing some of this down but eventually like man, I'm gonna have this be a book and then I'm gonna put this out here for people just to know and you know we say you know nobody is perfect before we even get to the personal side what how did you feel about just putting all that out there man I was definitely nervous mm -hmm. just because I it was a lot of dark secrets that number one some of my parents didn't even know about mm -hmm. a lot of things but it was one thing that my mom I always said growing up that I was stuck with me. She said, nobody can ever just come to me and say that my child did something because I never put expectations on my child. Mm -hmm. So while she loved us, you know, she knows that we're out on our own and we do different things. So there's always going to be things that maybe she not doesn't agree with. Okay. And so mm -hmm. at that point I looked at it and I was like, man, we're not, we're all not perfect. Mm -hmm. So for me to portray this image that I'm just a, 100% perfect yeah. it's false and yeah. so people need to see the actual me the real me mm -hmm. and so that's kind of what got me over the home as far as being authentic and allowing people to look inside of me I love that so what and why do you think that is important 
because I think we go through life thinking that you know we have to have it all together. We have to be we have to be perfect, but the very opposite, nobody's perfect. So do you think it's being able to not only admit nobody is perfect and also admitting to the things that you needed to go through mm-hmm. to become who you are and be vulnerable? Because I think we're living in this age where, you know, that vulnerable that vulnerability is welcome. Yeah. But uh presenting in in a context that is welcoming. And you did that in a great way, man. And I wanna congratulate you on that one, brother. Um, why do you think that's important to do that now in your life instead of like later yeah. on in life? I mean, I feel like it's definitely important. Number one, I feel that there's two sets of mirrors. Mm-hmm. So, of course, we have the regular mirror where we're taking selfies, taking pictures. Yeah. But then there's that other mirror mm-hmm. where it's like digging deep into who you really are. Mm-hmm. And so, oftentimes, when we're young, we think that because we're young, I'll just deal with this later. Mm-hmm. I'll deal with this when I get older. But then it creates another human being. Mm-hmm. And before you know it, you're older and you don't even know why you cry because yeah. of this. You don't even know why you're angry yeah. because of this. And so I feel like, especially if you have goals to be have a family, be a dad, all these different things, you want to work on some of your insecurities and different things before it gets too far too late. And so that was one of the things that I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure that I worked on myself. Mm-hmm. Before, you know, I brought another being into this world. That way I can yeah. help and teach them. So you, so I'm going to start getting into the book slowly. But you did, I love, I love what you did. Um, so you wrote a letter to your past self mm-hmm. and to your future self. Yeah. Uh, so walk me through the mindset between you did it. Because it, you just touched on it about, you know, being a father and being a husband. But what, what made you want to bring that up? Like, the letters were really crazy because it was nothing that was planned. When mm-hmm. I planned the book, I just had the chapters. Yeah. So then I got to writing and I was like, you never apologize to yourself. You know, like, you just never apologize. And so I was like, I need to write a letter to myself just apologizing for all of the, number one, the bad things that I did. Mm-hmm. Um, not holding myself accountable. Mm-hmm. I needed to do all of those things. But at the same time, when I apologized, I was like, I need something to pick myself up as well. Yeah. So the letter to my future self was a pick me up letter to acknowledge what I did in the past, but know that there's a future for myself as well mm-hmm. that's even brighter than my past. Mm-hmm. You know, not happy about my past, but it happened. I can learn from it and change my future. And so that's both. That's basically how the two letters intertwine with each other. Yeah. Yeah. So, so would you think it's fair to say that? If you can learn how to learn from your own mistakes, that it's gonna help. It's always gonna be hard to progress forward in life. It is. It is. We are our own biggest critics, mm-hmm. and nobody knows us better than we know ourselves. Mm-hmm. So if we can't learn from ourselves, nobody can really just come in and say, "Hey, you need to change this," right? Because they may not know why you act that way. Only you know. Mm-hmm. So our biggest teachers, our biggest critics, our biggest punishers, like it's ourselves. Yeah. At the end of the day. All right, so you had these teaching moments mm-hmm. throughout the book. In each chapter, you would share a story, and you say a teaching moment from that. Um, tell me more about what made you want to kind of just jump in and say, hey, this is a teaching moment I got from Because it's, you mm-hmm. placed them well, and I'm going to read one here in a minute, but just tell me about that. So the teaching moments, um, they're basically what I got from the, from the book or from whatever I wrote. Mm-hmm. So the way that I wrote the book, I'm talking to myself, mm-hmm. not necessarily just in first person, but I'm talking to myself. And so whatever I wrote, I felt like that's what I learned right. from that passage or whatever. And so mm-hmm. it was basically to give a reader a glimpse of what I learned from myself. And so they could either agree with it or maybe they learned something different. But every teaching moment is basically what I learned. So it's like I was learning as I was writing. The yeah, book. yeah. I was learning more about myself. Well, and I think that's a great example to point out why you was writing a letter, and it eventually it just turned into a book. Mm-hmm. And we learn a lot about ourselves when we reflect. Yep. And if you don't reflect on yourself, if you neglect that, then I mean, I think at the end of the day, you are going to hurt yourself even more. Mm-hmm. Um, and just so I know, and y'all on uh, Facebook, 
and Instagram. Yeah. Hey, if y'all got a, any questions that y'all want to be able to bring in, ask somebody's book or ask them, Mr. Charleston, uh, just to be able to come to, talk, come to your organization, talk, and any questions that you have, please throw them in there and we'll make sure that we uh, see them. But, so, let's go to your first chapter. Um, you talk about your 20. Uh, walk me through twinning and what that, uh, just that whole experience. Just walk me through that. So, I have a twin brother. Okay. And he's partially deaf because he contracted a disease called meningitis okay. um, when we were little. Mm -hmm. And so, basically, that chapter talks about my perspective growing up. A lot of times, children, their emotions sometimes get overlooked. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to talk about how I felt, not to bash anybody or anything like that, but to let it be known that even infants, mm -hmm. even toddlers, can that, like they know what's going on. Right, right. And so I talked about just what I was experiencing and how I had to change my perspective mm -hmm. on different things. Number one, with children with disabilities, mm -hmm. you know, um, in elementary school and different things like that. A lot of people or a lot of kids look at it as a different. Mm -hmm. And being different is a bad thing. But in actuality, difference is, is a good thing. Right. You know, because they're different from you. Nobody is the same. Mm -hmm. And so I had to learn about that. But what it did, it taught me how to operate in the world with everybody is different. Mm -hmm. And so I dealt, I talked about that, just disabilities. Um, I talked about how me not dealing with my emotions on the inside of me ended up coming out. Yeah. So, um, I was probably angry just about how other kids would treat children with disabilities. And then before I knew it, I didn't talk about it. So I found myself doing the same with kids, bullying, mm -hmm. so to speak. Yeah. And so I wanted to let it be known that if you don't handle those emotions, they will come out, mm -hmm. whether it's in a positive way or a negative way. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was about to go to those teaching moments. You said one of those teaching moments was uh, the emotion you bottle up will always resurface at some point. And learning to release those negative emotions into a positive manner. If not, you may hurt someone unintentionally. And so you were sitting, I think, in the class. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was the girl that was sitting in your seat. And, I mean, if you can, like, go back to that moment. Like, well, when you seen her in your seat, the way you responded to her, was it, you know, from that those heightening emotions that you had? I mean, the crazy thing is I remember that moment vividly. Mm -hmm. So she was sitting in my seat. She hadn't done anything to me. Yeah. Nothing like that. She was minding her own business. And it was just like some rage mm -hmm. just came up, like just over me. And I knew where the rage was coming from. It had nothing to do with her. It was just from all of the emotions that I bottled up. Mm -hmm. And all it took was like a small trigger just yeah. to set me off. And before I knew it, I was going off on her because of she was different from me. She mm. wasn't disabled, but she was different. different. Yeah. And so that was a quick trigger for me to just harp on it and take advantage of her, basically, mm -hmm. because she was different. So you, it, it took you to go to a, a camp mm -hmm. to really start realizing, okay, you know, at that point, you've been viewing difference in a negative way. Mm -hmm. But this camp celebrated the differences it did. including your brother it did and so walk me through like when you was exposed to that what did that do for you it changed my whole perspective just because the notion is children with disabilities or children that are disabled they can't do certain things mm -hmm. or that they're hindered but when i went to this camp nothing was off limits. Mm -hmm. You had kids scuba diving. You had kids, I can't even swim. You know, <laughs> and they were swimming. Yeah. Um, football, archery, fishing, all of these different things, um, bungee jumping, mm -hmm. um, just all these different things. And it changed my perspective to where it was like, just because you have a disability, it doesn't mean that you're limited mm -hmm. in life. Yeah. You know, these kids are operating, if not better than I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And so that changed my whole perspective. And, yeah, it just allowed me to step down off of my hot horse just because I'm quote unquote normal, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. So that's basically what happened. So after that, you you learned the lesson and you start moving forward in life, and eventually you started to talk about sports mm -hmm. and. Um, 
at this time you were about to get pulled away from your brother and some emotions still was wanting to come back up but uh, and you correct me wrong but you start you deal with it correctly but at the same time you know at this point you know you've been away from your brother but then now you've got to be away from your whole family and but you had to get to a point where you made a choice for yourself and your grandfather helped you out with that as well uh so just talking through that experience i think why you decided to go where you went to go playing mm-hmm. football and then we'll jump back into high school football and then go to uh, college football so i always believe in following your dreams following your goals mm-hmm. no matter what yeah and so i always knew just from playing sports that i had a goal of playing division one mm-hmm. football yeah and one thing about me is that if i have a goal there's no way i can do anything less mm-hmm. until i achieve that goal right and so even when it came to family um a lot of people were just not with my decision mm-hmm. on leaving yeah but at the same time i felt that i needed to make myself happy right and so like i said my grandfather he stepped in and you know he believed in me he has the final say so yeah or whatever <laughs> but you know he, he wanted me to go ahead and chase after my dreams and my goals mm-hmm. and i knew that it would be some high roads just because as chapter two talks about, it goes into me walking on to the football team. But at that point in life, I just believed in myself more than the odds that were stacked against me. Right, right. Okay, so let's transition this into you playing uh, football. And like I said, if anybody's new, if you have any questions that y'all want to ask Mr. Charleston Gurley, please be able to chime in and I'll be looking on the screen. Uh, but we'll just keep moving forward if not. So tell me about this um this football i mean going into playing football and let's start in high school okay let's start in high school real quick because I mean, you was a uh, you was top 100 in, yeah. the, in the state yeah i was you were a big deal you were the big deal let's just be I was, honest I was, I was top dog i was top dog in high school that's hard to admit sometimes i know and, and i was feeling myself yeah. i was feeling myself it don't take me long to get to feeling myself <laughs> but i was feeling myself but a lot of times when you get up there, you, you can fall as well. Mm-hmm. And so I had got beside myself, um, started letting my ego get the best of me. And the next thing I know, in my senior season, I got into a fight. Yeah. And basically, I ended up getting suspended a game, and that basically wiped all of my um, offers off of the table. Mm-hmm. And so that basically where my fall from grace came from. And so at that point, I needed – well, I, I didn't want to say I needed I had to – pick myself back up, mm-hmm. but I had to hold myself accountable. You know, it would have been real easy to say, oh, the coach didn't give me no scholarship. Now, I knew my actions from getting suspended was the reason why I didn't have any scholarships. Mm-hmm. So I had to take accountability for my actions, but at the same time, I had to move forward. Would you say that you learned a lot about the importance of character at the time? Yes. I didn't think, especially in high school, I didn't think that me being a rough rider, mm-hmm. you know, would transpire into me losing out on money. Yeah. Because at the time, it was like, man, I'm riding for my boys. We from, we from the hood. We gonna, <laughs> yeah. We not going to take no stuff. It's about respect. But in hindsight, none of that even mattered. Right, Because it right. just wiped money off the table. Absolutely. So where I could have put, you know, myself in a better position. So that led to you eventually going to Arkansas State University. Mm-hmm. Now, you had you had scholarships before the incident. Then you decided to walk on mm-hmm. to Arkansas State University. Yeah. Um, walk me through that. I mean, because you, you wanted to get a scholarship, but mm-hmm. now your first year you went in, uh, you had your roommate that came with you. Mm-hmm. Um, so w- what was like your thoughts? I know you were... You were excited because you had opportunity and I mean you just it seemed like as I was just going through the book you just constantly would revisit um, just like you have to work hard and you were praying working hard and super focused so I knew that being a walk on I was basically starting from the bottom Mm -hmm. but I I had already had a taste of what it was to be top dog Mm -hmm. and so me having that taste I wanted it again yeah even though I was the big man on campus in high school I wanted that again in college 
So that was kind of something that I was always chasing after, mm-hmm. even though I was a walk on. Mm-hmm. So me just being on the team, just saying, hey, you know, I, I'm on the college football team, like, it didn't sit well with me. Right. So every day I would try to work harder and harder to basically get back to that level of stardom that I felt like my life associated with right. prior to my selfish ways, Yeah. you know, at first. You know what I love a lot about that because it's even though you were down, you had made a choice to mm-hmm. continue to strive after this version of you mm-hmm. of becoming much better. And I think a lot of people lose grip of you know just because you were probably had a highlight moment at one time that's not that does not mean that you can't have that later on but we we limit ourselves kind of that fixed mindset like if i had this like this is it yeah like i I can't revisit that but you had a you did a good job of just i think uh grinding through and just saying look i'm gonna hold if i'm gonna do this this is what i'm gonna do and I wanted to become something much more. Now, I think you met a lot of different adversity that you didn't expect to meet. I met a lot. Uh, <laughs> so some were just, oh man, and I, I ran into this playing football, just kind of meet all the different coaches. So just different you coaches. Coaching changes, uh, injuries, mm-hmm. just the business side of football, yeah. the grind, trying to study. So there was a lot of different adversity. But at the same time, it was a, it was just an end goal in my mind where I wanted to get back, but at the same time, I wanted to get back to that level and learn from where I messed up that first time. Yeah. So I wanted to start them again, but I wanted to get there being humble, mm-hmm. working hard, um, appreciating where I was at. In right, life. right. Oh man, I love that. Um, so what, you, now that football chapter is, it's a great lengthy chapter mm-hmm. and I love it because I play football and I could, resonate with you know some of the setbacks that you have from coaching to injuries but what out of all that chapter what is something that you wanted people to take from your football experience i wanted people to transpire their journey into their daily lives where one day you could so in my football experience i had different coaches it was almost like getting fired Mm -hmm. and having to start over so in life you may wake up one day you may get fired Uh, the job may just up and not exist anymore. Right. So I wanted people to learn how to just keep pushing through mm-hmm. adversity. Like you have to have an end goal in your mind mm-hmm. and it's always going to be something that comes up. Right. right. Always. Absolutely. But you got to just keep pushing through that adversity. And it's not really something that somebody else can really tell you. It's got to be an inner thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's got to just be an inner put one step in front of the than the other. Yeah, yeah. And so that's basically what I wanted a person to really grasp from uh-huh. that chapter. I love that. And I think what we have found out is just as an athlete and just kind of in the business world, it's a lot of things you learn mm-hmm. as an athlete that still apply to the everyday yeah. life. Would you say that? Definitely, definitely. So you you jump into um, a lot of great things. And if, if they don't know how to get your book, make <laughs> sure you get a chance to... Um, it's the black account.com. Yep, the black black account. Account. Com. And um, we're going to go over a few other things because I want them to definitely hit on some of the this other chapters. But make sure you get a chance to go visit at his website, the black com. He has this in both um, physical copy where he autograph and then you have a digital copy as yep, well. That you can download straight to your phone. And uh, so love it. So what, so you, you have a lot of things that you talk about towards the end. You know, you talk about uh, wrecking ball, lungs, uh, lost myself, found God, uh, passion and higher calling. I mean, a lot of great things that I think you just need to get the time and just dig into. But out of which one of those chapters do you think uh, you really want to make sure people receive a, a different message than uh, some of the first two we talked about? I'd probably say lost myself. Okay. Lost Myself is a really, really big chapter uh-huh. where I talk, that's where a lot of the deep secrets mm. really come into play, mm-hmm. Lost Myself. And the thing that I even talked about in that chapter, the chapter is called Lost Myself, but I also talk about how can you be lost if you were never truly found. Mm. And so basically I was writing from an experience that I never really just identified who I really was anyway. Right, right. So I was always lost. Yeah. 
you know, and so I just talked about looking in that inner mirror, mm -hmm. pulling out all of these different insecurities, all of these different flaws that I felt about myself and trying to address them. Mm -hmm. So in doing that, how, how are you, um, when you, you tell somebody that lost itself, and I think I've experienced this, you know, especially when you think football is your life, mm -hmm. uh, especially when you have relationships that you think you're going to hold on to, especially when you just have a lot of different things that come at you. When you say it, like, when you think about lost yourself, what was probably one, one, one big lesson that you're still holding on to today? One big lesson that I'm really holding on to that I would probably say is just um, just the accountability mm. from it. Like it's real easy to look at your problems, even look at your insecurities, and say, "Well, such and such caused that for me, mm -hmm. or it happened because of that." With the accountability part and taking responsibility just for yourself, that's probably one of the biggest things. And it, it was hard, you know, like, especially, like, maybe some of my drug-related issues. I wanted to point the finger um, from how I fell into depression just from a relationship standpoint. I wanted to point the finger. Mm -hmm. But things don't just happen just because other people do stuff. Like, yeah. we yeah. all play a part. Even if it's just the smallest thing, mm -hmm. it, it's a trickle-down factor. So you got to realize that you play a part in a lot of things that hurt right. you. Mm -hmm. So... You know, it's funny, um, we, we play this blame game uh, for everything that we go through. You know, we can blame, you know, we can blame our parents. We can blame just the circumstance within itself. Uh, and we can blame our spouses if we're married. We can blame our kids for just the outcomes that we have. I mean, I know for me, I would blame my, you know, especially from a sports-related thing, I would blame, you know, I try to blame my dad. I try to blame my my parents because of not exposing me to more or yeah. helping me understand like what it looked like to be married or what mm -hmm. it looked like to have certain things. But in reality, you have to, you know, continue to be accountable, like yeah. you said, for yourself and realize like if that all that may be true, yeah, and all that is true, but what else is next? What else? Like, okay, I can blame you for all of this. Okay, mm -hmm. now what? Yep. You know, like. That person is not, or that situation is not going to turn right back around and be like, okay, now I'm going to lift you up. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, they go about their way, they go about their business, they continue doing what they're doing, so then you're still stuck there. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at yourself and figure out where did I go wrong? Yeah. What could I have done better? Yeah. And then pick yourself up from mm -hmm. that standpoint. Yeah, and I think that's one of the biggest lessons that you know I talk about on this show is just... Uh, that is what I would call as the growth mindset. I think the fixed mindset to say, I'm going to blame everybody else. I'm going to mm -hmm. play victim. And then I'm going to use that as a card to get through life. Yeah. Like, I want people to feel sorry for me because mm -hmm. of whatever has happened to me. And not saying none of it is not valid. But I think what we have to come to grips with and understand that we have to move past that. Yeah. You have to move past that. Because if you don't, it's going to hold you hostage. It is. And, it is. I mean, what would you just speak into just kind of that in general? Just like, if you can, mm -hmm. like holding hostage to something that it may be true. And I know we talked about it a few mm -hmm. times, but I, I think me, I just, I get passionate about this topic. Yeah. Because I see people, you know, posting stuff on Facebook and all oh, just social media. And it's just exposing their rally right now. Mm -hmm. And it may be true, but learning how to move past that. Well, you talked about it, which obviously which led to the book, but mm -hmm. exposing that reality, uh, what would be some just basic practices? Some basic practices is, number one, you have to get alone. Mm -hmm. So if you're never alone, you never allow yourself to really look at yourself. One of the biggest things, us as humans, we hate being alone mm -hmm. because it forces you to look at everything. So... We'll always be at a friend's house. We stay with individuals. We're always around people. And so what, that's really hard being alone. And I, I was actually living alone, so I was kind of forced to do it. Yeah. 
where, I mean, even at one point, I didn't want to do it. I was throwing a party like every other weekend, mm-hmm. just trying to escape it, avoid it. Yeah. Avoid it. Yeah. But you have to learn how to be alone. That's number one, how you can face it. Okay. The second thing is just writing down just your own insecurities, not what somebody else tell you. Because a lot of people, they won't even tell you the truth. Mm. Oh, you look fine. Oh, you're not rude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You have to write down how you really feel mm-hmm. just about yourself. Good things as well as bad things. Like, you really have to dissect mm. yourself. And then from that point, you just have to apologize to yourself and then just hold yourself accountable, but then, you know, make yourself feel good, too, mm-hmm. without the influence of other people. Because you never really know whether their opinions are sincere, uh-huh. whether it's yeah. the truth. You you never really know. They could be your friends. They could be acquaintances. But only you know you. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. you can get perspective. Yeah. But only you know you. So. Mm. That's good. That's good. That's good. Um, so where can where can people be able to find you if they want to learn more about the story, get your book, or just uh, maybe bring you in and speak to the organization or their conference or anything mm-hmm. that happened? So how can they be able to find you? So anybody can find me on my Facebook, just Charleston, C-H-A-R-L-E-S-T-O-N, Gurley. Yeah. Um, on my IG, I think it's the accountant underscore five. Yeah, that's what I think so. And I do have a website where people can contact me www.theblackaccountant.com or even my email um, <laughs> charleston.girly at yahoo.com yeah. but I'm always looking to um, speak just about my book and my story yeah. specifically if there's op- any opportunity to speak to just young adults yeah. or children you know my age that's always welcome mm-hmm. you know because I just feel like it's a story that needs to be told not necessarily just my story but just the lessons that you know we as young people just need to recognize because we do as far as young people we don't really pay attention to the small details Mm -hmm. and then for you know any of those that are watching us as young people we don't really have just clear avenues to express our emotions Mm -hmm. and so that was another reason why I wrote the book to show that you know it's okay to talk about your feelings right it's okay to talk about what you're going through like you have to like let that stuff out yeah and so that was another reason you know why i wrote the book so i, I have to ask this question so are you an accountant yes yes <laughs> i am an accountant <laughs> i am <laughs> and so what how did you get the title like so what, what, what made you say the black accountant and if if i may mm-hmm. and you correct me if i'm wrong but is it because you know, people see maybe one thing, but mm-hmm. it's something else inside. Yeah, so that that's basically the whole reason for the title. Mm-hmm. And it came from the movie, where there's a movie called The Accountant. Yeah, that's true. And um, about that. Ben Affleck, ben Affleck yeah. um, he was an accountant, but he dealt with, like, autism mm, yeah, that's and right. a few other things. And so that's like, when I looked at that, I was like, yo, he's an accountant, but he has some other issues. Mm-hmm. And so I looked at myself, and like, yo, I'm an accountant, but I have some other issues. And then I just wanted to embrace my ethnicity by saying the black accountant like that as well. Like that. So I like that, man. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's, that's, that's <laughs> good. That's good. So yeah, and yeah, I forgot about that. That's a good movie. All right. So our time is up today, but that does not mean that you still can't find Mr. Uh, Charleston Gurley at his website, Instagram, Facebook, or his email. So make sure you go get this book. Make sure you spend the time to help you understand. Maybe this can help you understand maybe some things that you're going to. I think we all go through this phase of understanding that nobody is perfect, but sometimes you need to hear somebody else's story to understand, okay, what am I really struggling with? And that's why I come to you every Tuesday. Like I said, I'll bring you experts and I'll bring you individuals that's going to help you walk through your own story and help you embrace this growth mindset. So, Thank y'all for joining in over there. Thank y'all for watching. Got a lot of love. Um, have any questions over there? No, we just got some. We got some just, responses. Just some likes and some responses. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So, you know that question I always ask. Make sure you go out and purchase this book. Link will be in the bio. What's your self talk? <laughs>